WTVR CBS 6 made history when we went on the air in April 1948 and we'd break a record a few years later when we built a soaring television transmitter behind our station, but it took some convincing, a little luck and much bravery to put up such a massive structure right in the middle of a Richmond neighborhood. Tonight, the story of the WTVR tower. I've seen it uh, whipping back and forth during earthquakes. As you know, it's probably the biggest lightning rod in, in Metro Richmond. And what I can tell you is that the CBS 6 tower has been part of the landscape ever since I can remember. In the heart of Richmond's museum district, it stands as a monumental work of art. You look at it today and go, wow. For the last seven decades, WTVR's soaring red and white tower has been equal parts awe-inspiring and comforting. You know, when I wanted to figure out where I was, if I was driving around the western side of the city, I would always, it was a place. It was a wayfinding place for me, and, and I loved that. When Channel 6 first went on the air in April 1948, becoming the South's first television station, the transmitter was located in a field off Staples Mill Road near Broad Street, but that tower had limited power. So WTVR's visionary founder, Wilbur Havens, came up with a plan to change the city's skyline, and he wanted to lay the foundation right in the station's own backyard. The, the tower, when it was built, uh, that's such a story from beginning to end. It took them three years just to get all the permits because everybody uh, that could opposed the building of the tower. While there had been attempts to erect similarly sized structures, no one had ever tried to build something like this in the middle of a city neighborhood. It was really contentious. It was one of the first times where the, you know, the city and the citizens are having to wrestle with the balance of the conveniences of modern life with you know, intrusions into the visual landscape um, of the city. Despite some resistance, things began to fall into place in December 1951. Just before Christmas, the U.S. government gave air space clearance. One month later, the Federal Communications Commission granted permission. Then in March 1952, Richmond's Board of Zoning approvals gave the green light. But there was one last hurdle. WTVR still needed the blessing of the little-known National Production Administration, which was in charge of developing and producing materials and facilities necessary for military defense. So Havens promised that the new tower would be a vital tool for national security. The station had already been airing weekly survival programs produced by the Federal Civil Defense Administration, teaching Virginians about things like air raid warnings and surviving an atomic attack. Haven said a bigger tower would be able to beam programs like that to more television sets than ever before. The NPA signed off on the plan and construction began at the corner of Tilden Street and Cutshaw Avenue. Remarkable film footage still exists, a silent chronicle of the death-defying exploits of the brave men who built the tower from the ground up and up. Today there's only a handful of people that can do this, but back then, uh, again, uh, th these were guys from the greatest generation. They, they had already saved the world, so some, a little something like building a TV tower over a thousand feet high uh, was really nothing to them. The project took about 13 months, a whole lot of steel and one and a half million pounds of concrete. And the day it was completed, it went right into the history books. Obviously nothing like that had ever been built. It was the tallest freestanding radio TV tower in the United States at the time. 1,049 feet above sea level to be exact. As predicted, viewership also hit new heights. You have to remember that that tower, when they turned it on, was a flamethrower. I mean, that sent out such a signal. Now, you didn't need to live in the Richmond area to watch Channel 6. In fact, you didn't even need to live in Virginia. And yes, the signal went up into the D.C. area, uh, well into North Carolina. It burned through the Blue Ridge Mountains into the Harrisonburg area and places like that. It went into Norfolk in that area. The tower is still a lightning rod, but its flamethrowing days are over. Knock wood, it, it's still looking good, even though, again, we, we really haven't used it since, what, 2009. That's when WTVR and every other TV station in the country threw the switch and converted from analog to digital. The tower does continue to broadcast the signal of a local radio station, and it's used by firefighters and rescue crews from all over North America as they train for high-rise emergencies. It still serves a purpose today and it helps us find our way to work. A titanic landmark that continues to stand alone all these years later. 
That's so cool. I didn't know it had that much history. I'm just glad we never have to go to the top of it. <laughs> that was a pretty, pretty high up there picture. It's on my bucket list. What about you? No. <laughs> I'm right down here.